What's going on everybody? Welcome to part two of our data visualization apps with Python and Dash tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're gonna be talking about is how we can have the user interact with the actual app itself and, and pull that information, do something with it, and update the app live in real time. So uh, with that, let's just jump into it. Uh, we're gonna bring in one more import and that's gonna be from dash.dependencies. We're gonna import input and output. Now what we wanna go ahead and do is uh, pretty much, we're gonna redo the layout, I think. So we'll keep children. And in fact, I probably, well, we didn't tab. The, so we'll just delete this here. <clears throat> So we're just going to redo what's going to come, you know, inside the children part of the app dot layout. Um, but what we're going to say is uh, DCC, so that dash core components dot input. So dash core components, and I'm not really sure why. I mean, in theory, I guess it's an HTML component, but this one's a special, like input would generally be an HTML component, but an input in this case is kind of special because it needs to have some JavaScript about it because it needs to be able to grab the information that's in there and, and update it. So in fact, we're going to use dcc.input, but just make sure you're recognizing that that's input from the dash core components that is not input from dash dot dependencies. We're going to be using that input momentarily. So dcc.input, um, and then, so that's like an input field. It's going to be an input field in, in basically the HTML. So it's going to have similar, um, similar parameters that you might have in an input field. So for example, we're going to have an ID that's going to be, we're going to call that input. Um, and if you're familiar with, you know, programming with or writing HTML, let's be serious, not a program, just pissing people off. Uh, uh, it's, you have to have an ID in order to interact with it. If you wanted to populate it or do something to it or apply some rules to it, it needs to have an ID. So you, you basically are going to have to have an ID there. Uh, value, that's just going to be the starting value, whatever you want, enter something. Um, and then finally, the type that that thing is, in this case, it's just text. So we're just going to say text. So if we have an input, we might as well have an output. Now, interestingly enough, we, you know, be, again, if you're coming from, you know, HTML and stuff like that, you know, the output could be anything just it needs to have an ID of wherever you want to throw that output to. So just some JavaScript's going to run and it's going to populate something of some ID. We just need to have that something. So this doesn't actually need to be a dash core component. It just needs to be an HTML element uh, that has a certain ID. So in that case, it's just HTML.div. <clears throat> and then the ID here is going to be output. So simple enough, that's all. That's, our out that's going to be our layout. So literally, it's just going to be a field that we input something into and the output will be the result of whatever it is we happen to type into there. So now what we're going to do is actually make a function that's going to handle the input and give us whatever the output is, you know, produce some output. So what we're going to do now is it's going to be a wrapper. So app dot callback. And if you're not familiar with decorator slash wrappers, I do have a tutorial on them. Go to uh, either Python program net, find this tutorial. Um, or you could actually just search decorators or wrappers on Python program at net if you want to know more about how these work exactly. Um, so now in the callback is where we're going to use that dash dot dependencies input and output. So what we're going to say is the output uh, is going to be the uh, based from the component underscore ID of output. And then the component property that we're going to be modifying basically will just be the children. So so this should already, if you're thinking ahead, this should already get you maybe a little excited because you, in theory, could, could be modifying more than just the contents. You could modify a lot of properties. So most of the time you're probably just going to be modifying children, but the thought that you could, I, you could actually modify more than just the, the contents is interesting to say the very least. Now what we're going to say is the input, we're going to put that into a list uh, and that is going to be component ID that will be input and then uh, we're going to say the component property property um, in this case is going to be whatever the value is of that input field. We want that to be the input into 
this function. Now, right now, this is just a this is a wrapper. We actually need the function that this is going to wrap. So define and and honestly, you can call this whatever you want. Um, you don't have to call this. You could just name it anything at this point. Um, but we'll call it update value. It's going to take input data, and then at this point, we can do anything. We can return. Um, and in this case, it's expecting us to have, sorry, my nose is super itchy. It's expecting us to have um, some text. So we'll say input colon, um, and then we'll just do this uh, format. Um, and it should be a value. So just input data it should already be in string form. So literally, it's just going to output exactly what we input. So let me go ahead and save that. Let me run that. Hopefully, we won't run into server issues. Let me start it up, bring it down here. And so it says enter something. And as we type, um, I didn't really specify this on the initial uh, kind of when I was showing you a few of the apps, but it wasn't like I was typing a ticker and then hitting enter. I was just typing the ticker and it just automatically updated. So as you can see, it just updates in real time. Now, there's obviously this is a super simple example of uh, you know what you could do, but you could immediately start to to throw in um, other things. So for example, we could say try that <clears throat> except ex actually I'm not even going to do an exception. Let's just return uh, some error. <laughs> Uh, that hurts. Uh, so what we could say is instead, let's say uh, return the string value of uh, float input data times two. Actually, let's do to the power of two. Uh, that should work. Save it. Let's see if we hit error. Nope. So, oh shoot, I went too far. Let's see, here we go. Let's refresh. So some error, of course, because that's not a number. One to the power of two, two, we could do four, five, 255, and so on. And so anyways, um, that's some starting basic logic. But uh, I think what we'll do is uh, I'd like to show that app that, uh, that just graphs some stock information. Um, if you don't know anything about finance or stocks, that's OK. People are always like, I don't know anything about finance. Whenever I show stuff with finance, it's like super basic. It's just dates and values. You just If you don't know anything about finance, just ignore the fact that it's finance. So, <laughs> and if you want to use something else, like pull some data from Quando, pull your own data, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but I'm just going to show a quick example of you know, rather than just taking input and outputting that input, uh, what if we dynamically graphed based on some input, dynamically graphed some some stock that has that exact symbol. I think that'll kind of even further drive this point home and show all the things that we can kind of modify uh, in a function like this. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.